Arman Rahim. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the refractive errors. First of all, okay, what is going to be the outline? First, we will be discussing the introductions about and the optics. I mean, this is uh, just a recall sort of things. Then the different refractive errors that is myopia, hypermetropia press biopia and astigmatism so the all students must know these conditions at least and of course afakia and pseudofakia they are also very simple conditions easy to understand and uh, as far as the n isometropia and n isoconia they are a slightly a different concept but the student must know about these things also uh, just uh, just a revision that uh, the visible part of electromagnetic spectrum that, that you we can see from the slide that right from here to here this is too much it's a very big electromagnetic spectrum and human eye can see only a very small part from this spectrum as you can see that so the retina is sensitive to this part only and this lies between uh, 3 390 nanometer to 760 nanometer so this light the visible spectrum should be correctly focused onto the retina so that uh, the retinal system can generate uh, accurate visual so the definition once the light travels in any direction and it passes from one transparent medium to another. Now the other medium have different optical density. So this once is passes, so the it causes changes, and this change is called refraction. And this is the formula for the refractive. And uh, in this slide we are seeing that uh, the refractive index of air. And as far as the eye is concerned, the aqueous cornea and the crystalline lens, and uh, the corrective for correction for this myopia, hypermetropia, different glasses are used like this crown glasses and front glass. The refractive index of the front glass is more. And just for information, the diamond has the highest refractive index. So, just to review in this law of refraction, that the light one is the incident light it's falling on a surface from which it is reflected so the angle of the reflected ray equals the angle of incident ray with respect to the normal the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all lie in the same plane the incident and reflective ray are on opposite side of the normal so very so here we see the refraction and uh, <clears throat> the light is passing from the left side to the right side this is the incident ray this is the refractive ray now in this the optical density and the refractive index is different or is a higher uh, light is traveling from lower index to a higher index and here from higher to a lower so there is a bending and again there is bending of the light the emergent ray and this process is called refraction here it is refraction and also here this is also refraction so this is how the lenses work and also we see this is the principle of a convex lens it's just like two prisms placed base to base apex on the opposite side and how the light passes and it bends this is a practical example that a man who is trying to catch a fish actually the fish is on this location and the light emerges from the uh, from the water on the surface from water to air the refraction occurs and there is the bending and once it enters in the human eye disappear that the fish is on this location so if it if this fisherman or or a villager hits the fish in this direction he is going to miss it so this is the practicality 
of this refraction. These are the lenses which are used and you people who has visited the IOPD have seen that. The plus lenses are generally labeled with black color or and also a plus sign and the minus lenses are with a minus sign. Uh, and these lenses are actually uh, pieces of transmissive materials which have one or both faces curved for uh, for converging or diverging or what we call as image processing, image producing purposes. And uh, they have the powers like this is minus 1.25 and this is plus 1.75. So they actually this power denotes that it is measurement of the refractive power of this lens, which is which equals to the reciprocal of focal length in meters. Again, convex lens, like we have seen that this is just breakage of the convex lens, so that the how they work. And parallel rays from the distance object are converged, and where they are converged is called focal point. And uh, these convex lenses are also used as a magnifier. Yes, you can see that they have magnified. And concave lenses, uh, the concave lenses, the parallel rays from the distant object, once they pass to the divergent lens or the concave lens, they diverge. And they are plotted back. They appear they are coming from a, fo from a point, which is the focal point in this case. For concave lens and uh, the image produced is reduced in size so a negative lens is diverging lens a concave lens uh, and corrects myopia and a positive lens is a converging lens it's a convex lens and it corrects hypermetropia like in this example we see one diopter lens is placed like here and this focuses light at a distance of 1 meter or 100 centimeter. So its power is 1 diopter. And whereas for the 20, for the 2 diopter, the distance is half, it's a 50 centimeter. So the power is twice or is double. So these are positive forms of lens. They can be biconvex, convex on the one side plane, on the other side, and meniscus form. Same is the case in the biconcave lenses, planar concave, and negative meniscus. Now we are going to discuss or talk about the refractive components of that. The whole eye system has or constitutes approximately 58 to 60 diopters. So we see the cornea. The cornea is a refractive, is a major refractive cell and it contributes about 40 diopters and its power doesn't change. The aqueous humor and the lens, it contributes from 18 to 20 diopters and the shape can change. So this is only variable uh, refraction, refracting part in the human eye. And the vitreous body, we only see those lights, rays that reflect in the direction of our eyes. Like we knew illumination, if it darks, is it the dark and we can't see the pencil but once the, we put a, the light is put on and we see that the light is reflected from this pencil and the light rays which enters the eye due to those rays we can see the pencil or any other so again a schematic diagram that this contributes up to 18 to 20 diopters cornea 40 diopters the distance behind the lens to the retina is approximately 17 millimeter. This is how the image is formed. Uh, like this is the object, the image is inverse, has been inverse, and right has become left, and left has become right. Up has become down, and down has down is up. How the image is uh, projected onto the retina. So, the human optical characteristics, pupil diameter which ranges from 2 mm at a very bright light to 8 mm, uh, field, field of view is approximately uh, in one eye is 
130 degree in a vertical meridian and 200 degree in the horizontal meridian. Like that. And in the field of both eyes, once used simultaneously, in the center they overlap, this is approximately 130 degree diameter. And visual equity is one car, one. Now, human eye optical functions. Uh, while viewing the objects which are closer than uh, infinity, we need accommodation. And, uh, far point is the farthest is a point uh, at which once the eye is relaxed, it produces a focused image. For the normal eye, it is at infinity. The near point is the closest location at which eye has the ability that it can produce a focus image with the help of accommodation. In normal individual, this point is around 25 centimeters. The visual equity is recorded mostly uh, with the help of Snell and stars. It is positioned at 6 meters, or uh, in American system, we call it 20 feet. And each, each eye is tested and together, uh, and then both of the eyes are tested they are tested with the correct lenses. 20 by 20, also known as 6 by 6, uh, is the ability to see a letter of a given size at 6 feet or a 20 feet. And a 612 vision or a 20 by 40, what a normal person can see at 12 meter, uh, this person must be at 6 meter to see that. And 6 by 60 is what a normal person can see from 60 meter or 200 feet. This person must be at 6 meter to see it. This is how the visual equity is recorded or and they, are, uh, they are recorded or documented actually. So these are different Snell and stars like E letter charts and, and uh, these uh, alphabetics and, and uh, pictograms like pictures and now we are going to discuss about the refractive errors. First of all, different refractive errors like uh, just a concept like press biopia is related to the uh, old age uh, and uh, especially uh, it starts around 40 years of age. There is loss of accommodative ability of the lens resulting in difficulties with the near task. We will discuss this concept later on in more details. Astigmatism, the curvature of the cornea or lens or both, is not spherical uh, and therefore causes image blur on the retina. And isoconia, a difference of image size between the two eyes as perceived by the patient. And isometricia is a refractive power difference between the two eyes, usually two greater than two diopter. A fakia, absence of lens, no lens. Fakos is lens. A fakia, absence of lens, no lens. Pseudo fakia, artificial lens in the eye. Emetropia. Emetropia is normal person, normal eye. When parallel rays of light uh, uh, from a distance object are brought to focus on the retina with the eye at rest. That is no, no accommodation, not accommodated. Okay. So this is how the parallel rays are being focused onto the retina. So accommodation has to be addressed for this E metropia. And A metropia, A metropia means abnormal. A signifies abnormality. So when parallel rays of light are not brought to the focus onto the retina in an eye at rest, it is it means there is a refractive error. So we have to uh, have to find out the cause so that a sharp uh, image is formed onto the retina. Emetropia is divided into myopia, which is uh, in this patient, the patient is able to see near things, so this is also known as nearsightedness. And hypermetropia, uh, in which uh, uh, patient is able to see the far object, but finds difficulty in the near object. This is farsightedness. And astigmatism, uh, the cornea or the lens are non-spherical and this is a diagrammatic representation in emetropia 
in short uh, this is myopia but you must try to remember like this uh, this concept like as if the eye is larger than normal okay so the image is formed in front of the right okay and in uh, hypermetropia the image is being formed behind the retina okay if we see if we put a ruler this eye is shorter than even myopic eye and is the normal eye and this is larger longer than the normal eye so now we are going to discuss the hypermetropia uh, this is a, actually uh, hypermetropia is a stage in normal development of the eyes at birth eyes are hypermetropic the babies are born slightly hypermetropic once they grow the hypermetropia decreases in normal babies and uh, the length of eyeball is shorter than it should be as we have previously discussed when this persists in adulthood it means there is slight imperfectly developed eye and uh, these are special forms like in the ectopial intestinal the lens is uh, in uh, has left the visual axis and uh, whether it is are uh, drawn upward or downward uh, and similarly in old uh, in, in previously once the lenses were not intraocular lenses were not available and this uh, aphakia was was the option at that time so post operative post operative aphakia and due sometime the lens changes uh, in the development of cataract cataract can also lead into the hypermetropic shift so here we see that uh, this is hypermetropic eyes the rays are being focused behind the retina so this is a there is a virtual point behind the eye and uh, what happens to correct this to the eye want to have a sharp image so there occurs accommodation even for at the far objects and the resultant in the image is brought on to the retina so this can be corrected if a plus lens is placed so accommodation will go into rest and we will achieve image onto the retina so hypermetropia they are able to see far objects but not the near one sometimes difficulty in seeing near objects with excellent far vision actually this is a myth as they have difficulty seeing both near and far with no difficulty seeing near objects so because they use excessively their ciliary muscles so which results in eye strains and what we call asthenopia the same things and this spotted redness red eye blurring of text let us see in hypermetropia uh, acute angle clear glaucoma is associated in hypermetropia and they are corrected with a plus lens now myopia myopia is opposite to the hypermetropia globe is too long relative to refractive mechanism or refractive mechanism is too strong uh, eyes mostly are big eyes keratoconus is associated with myopia usually they present in first or second decade and uh, rarely begins after the age of 25 except in patient with diabetes mellitus or cataract bachche jab school mein dakhil kiye jate hain to wahan se complaints aati hain ki ji bachcha jo aage baithta hai peeche jaye to usko nazar nahi aata so this is how the patients presents to us or sometimes if father and mother dono myopic hain aur unko shak hai ki unke bachche ko hai to wo pehle bhi aa sakte hain optics jo hai the image is being formed in front of the retina and for the near uh, point this is uh, the, they are able to read easy so the patient present blurring of vision near vision isn't affected or is 
there is a myth that uh, the refractive by by prescribing the refractive error the progression of my myopia can be halted or can be stopped and this is a wrong myth uh, glasses only provide the clear image that's it this is just uh, uh, a comparison like in emetropia what is the condition in myopia and the anterior to posterior diameter is increasing in high myopia this is more in pathological myopia the other pathologies also start to develop like staphylomy and uh, uh, this myopia this uh, is a, is a, up to can be up to six uh, uh, can be up to three diopters the simplest myopia is the commonest starts around puberty at uh, around 25 to 25 uh, at this age it stops and usually it is less than 6 diopter or something like minus 7 some of the literature says minus 7 but mostly it is less than 6 diopter and there are no degenerations the the retina is absolutely healthy and the degenerative myopia is also common it starts in childhood and keep on progressing it's a progressive myopia up to the three age of 35 even and uh, in very my many high myopes the the diopter power needed for the correction may be up to this minus 30 up to this and uh, degenerations are common uh, which may lead to blinding complications the congenital myopia is rare and uh, the baby are born with this this magnitude of myopia and degeneration may or may not occur acha ye hai pathological myopia isme jo hai we can see that there is temporal crescent and there is macular degeneration and then fundus is tessellated uh, this is a uh, this is a fundus photograph and some uh, icg in the chinese being angiography and this is ocd of a 65 years old female which had a vision of 20 by 30 on uh, ultrasound her uh, axial length from anterior to posterior was 29.5 mm and there are choroidal neovascularization and uh, this neovascularization is also can be seen this white arrow on icg and again over here in this d there are cracks the black arrows these are cracks called as lacquer cracks and this is a oct where this white arrow shows that there is a subretinal fluid this stack shows that this is choroid and uh, this is uh, red stack is a sclera whereas the yellow stack is subretina fluid again this is this is orbital fat this is sclera this is choroid and this white arrow is subretina fluid <coughs> so again just a revision that uh, in low myopia the myopia is uh, uh, up to minus 3 diopter and uh, in moderate myopia this is up to 6 diopter then from minus 3 to minus 6 diopter which is mostly related or associated with the pigmentary dysfunction syndrome which can further lead to pigmentary glaucoma the pigments they clog the uh, the drainage system in the eye which is located in the angle and high myopia which is the uh, which uh, the myopia uh, amount or my myopic magnitude is from minus 6 to even more and uh, in this high myopia uh, these patients are more likely to develop the retinal detachments and they are more associated with the primary open glaucoma and uh, because they have degenerative vitreous so they can experience floaters at very early age so this is another slide
which is showing the uh, posterior sarcoma and here CNV and submacular hemorrhage and the green one there is a break, rectal breaks, rectal tear which leading to uh, the rectal detachment and also the development of cataract. So how the myopia is corrected? It is corrected with the minus lens as, the, as we have already discussed and patient may use glasses and he may use contact lenses and the refractive surgery is also another option. So this is how, how the myops usually see. You can see that the flower is, uh, is sharp. This is clear whereas the objects at far are blurred. So the correction of myopia, a minus or concave lens has been placed in front of the eye so that the image is now focused onto the retina. And this can be achieved even, even with the help of the uh, contact lens. So this can also correct the myopia. Now the astigmatism. This is the astigmatism, uh, how the objects are seen. And this is again the blurry image which are seen by the astigmatic people. So the light rays are, are not refracted uniformly in all meridians due to the non-spherical shape of cornea or lens or both. So parallel rays passing through the, these different planes are brought to different point of focuses. So the cause is unknown but is very common is usually present from the birth and uh, the astigmatism can be uh, present alone or it can be present with the with myopic patients and it can be present in hypermetropic patients also <coughs> so with the help with all those uh, people who are suffering from astigmatism they face the difficulty to see the fine details even at a closer work and even at the distance. So they are corrected with the cylindrical lenses. And that can also, they can also be corrected with a refractive eye surgery. So this is a diagram which is showing the cross section of astigmatic eye. The pink color shows that the rays in this meridian are being focused in front of the retina. I mean, or the pink color is, they are being focused behind the retina. And whereas the green in this meridian, the power of the lens is uh, power of the uh, refractive medium of the eye is more. So they are focused in front of the retina. So this is first focus. This is the second focus. So a blur zone, which is horizontal vertical light rays have different focal points. So the types, they are regular astigmatism, which is simple compound and mixed. <clears throat> and this irregular estimates when the refractive power changes irregularly in different meridians that is they are not perpendicular to each other so the types of uh, regular estimatism that simple and compound and mixed so they can this diagram in simple hyperopaque one focus is onto the retina, the other focus is behind the retina. This is simple hyperopic or simple hypermetropic. In simple myopic, one focus is onto the retina, other focus is in front of the retina. And in compound hyperopic, both focuses are behind the retina. And in compound myopic, both focuses are in front of the retina. And in mixed astigmatism, one focus is in front of the retina and the other is behind the retina. So now we move to the next topic, which is in accommodation. This is the diagrammatic representation. What happens? This is the eye in the resting phase. These are the ciliary muscles which are relaxed. They are not contracted. Okay. So the ligaments, they are taut. Once they are taut, the lens is more, uh, or we can call less swollen. It is more. Uh, the anterior to posterior diameter is less. Once these muscles contract like here, the ciliary, the suspensory ligaments, they slacken. So it has the natural tendency or inherent tendency that it becomes more globular from now. Anterior to posterior diameter has increased. So it is more convex now as compared to this condition. 
so the light emitting from near objects are diverging so in this condition now a focused image is formed on to the retina and for the distance beam if these muscles are relaxed so parallel lights coming and passing through this refractive medium of the eye the focused image is being formed to the retina in press biopia the different changes occur in the lens in the suspensory ligaments and in the muscle ciliary muscles age related so the capacity of these muscles the ligaments and the <coughs> lens itself are reduced so a condition known as press biopia is experienced. so in press biopia it is a physiological loss of accommodation in advancing age and the pathogen pathogenesis as we already discussed that there is a deposition of proteins in the lens so the lens becomes hardened and less elastic so uh, the the elasticity of the lens progressively decreases and there is a decrease accommodation due to the weakness of the suspensory ligaments and the weakness of the uh, press biopia <coughs> the onset is around 40 years difficulty in reading the fine prints and there is headache and visual fatigue especially on the close work and here been chart the vision is checked there is impaired vision here in afakia the whether it is it has been achieved surgically uh, loss of uh, lens or absence of lens or dislocation of lens it means that the refractive power of the eye has decreased normally it is up to 58 diopters and the lens contribute from 18 to 20 diopter so there is deficiency of 20 diopter which is a large amount so the patient are unable they are unable to see far and even near visions if a case signs if the patient is asked to look down and with the help of a torch or a slit lamp there is scar mark at the upper lumbar and deep interior chamber jet black pupil and iridodermosis iridodermosis is shaking of iris once eye moves from right to left or up to down and back into the primary position and the this iridodermosis is observed with the help of a torch or on the slit lamp and uh, sometime previously a peripheral iridectomy scar may be there or not a peripheral iridectomy may be there or not ऑपरेशन हुआ कर सकता है ट्रीटमेंट क्या है कि अगर पेशेंट बहुत ओल्ड है वो दोबारा सर्जरी कांट गो अंडर गो टू सर्जरी सो स्पेक्टिकल लेंसेज आर द सेफेस्ट नाउ बट दे हैव देयर इनहेरेंट प्रॉब्लम्स एंड सिंस देयर इज अ बिग स्कार देयर फॉर देयर आर देयर इज मोर चांस ऑफ हैविंग अ वेरी देयर इज मोर चांस कि दी एस्टिमेटेशन भी होगा दैट मस्ट बी आल्सो करेक्टेड contact lenses is can be prescribed but this is very difficult for the old patients to handle them intraocular lens technically is the best option if the age of the patient and uh, the eye permits then an intraocular lens can be placed the problems like there is a uh, image magnification with these high forward glasses and they have a phenomenon which is jack in the box phenomenon that once they see uh, it or an object which is moving from the periphery towards the center that the object suddenly disappears and then suddenly appears due to this uh, high number of uh, plus lenses and they are unable to initially misjudgment misjudge the distances and the spectacle weight is also quite in uh, you know, unbearable hota hai zyada hota hai and these glasses also limit the visual fields and of course the ultralight ultraviolet protection which was previously provided previously was provided by the lens has been has lost and the problems are of course with the contact lenses they cause allergy they cause corneal ulcerations and the cost is too much and elderly cannot handle this so anisometropia which is a difference in refractive power between two eyes if it is more than 1 diopter it may lead to an eye refractive correction offer leads to different image sizes of the two retina which is called anisotropy 
and then actually it depends the degree of refractive anomaly and type of symptoms they cause eye strain diplopia and isometropic amblyopia and the patient may present with a divergent squint and uh, this is diagnosed with the red spectacle lens can be given to correct it and contact lenses and eczema laser procedures can be done and implantation of proper powered IUL can solve the problem in selective care thank you very